IEEC closes down shops for selling expired goods. Authorities yet to clarify contact tracing of positive cases. Youth surrender weapons to bring about peace. This is National MTV News with Toraho Morea. Hello and good evening. This is Monday's News. A collective community effort to create a safer environment saw the surrendering of weapons by youth in the Gomo Sasipo community of June Valley. The whole community came together on Sunday to witness this life-changing event. Now, now it becomes. Mothers, fathers, youths and kids dance in unison, signifying their full support to this change. Notable leaders in NCD, such as Credit Corporation CEO Peter Aitzi, was among the many concerned leaders that turned up with NCD Governor Powers Parkop to show their support. Before surrendering their weapons, the youths, numbering over 20, apologized publicly to their parents, to the community leaders, to women and girls for causing fear and anxiety, and to young boys for being bad examples. For one of the youths becoming a parent and having a daughter change his perspective on the type of parent he wanted to be for his daughter. Despite receiving major criticisms, he was the first to give up his homemade gun. <laughs> A proud NCD governor while enforcing his government's commitment to work closely with all communities in NCD challenged the youths to make peace with themselves first in order for real change to happen. Love yourself! Recognize your ability and potential that when I'm kind, talent you gotta start. You start with yourself. Peace won't be real. Reconciliation is yeah, not true, true. And not of last, they don't have sustainable. Chairman of the Gomosasipo Settlement Association, Diki Kore, acknowledged the willingness of the community, especially the youths, for this reconciliation ceremony. Now, that's not something now, and we come up here, me looking at one of the big places since we come up in the community. So, 5,000 plus man, Mary, Lapuni come under the young plan, they got down, old baby. Me like us, um, uh, all by work about free. Na city pikila blog all emba right. Na emba no got porret. Na emba no got the same person by come up. The youths also handed over homebrew materials and received Bibles from Seven Day Adventist youths from the community, cementing this momentous life decision. Shamin Poreambe, National MTV News. Following talks on customary land being alienated from landowners, the Lands Department is encouraging customary landowners to have their land registered. This is to ensure their land is bankable so they can use the land for further development. Lands Minister John Rosso also announced plans to launch an automated filing system to help solve the problem of missing files within the Lands Department. Speaking to the media recently, the Lands Minister says there are policies in place for customary lands to be registered under the Lands Department. He is calling on landowners with portions of lands near towns and cities to consult the Lands Department and have their land registered. So it makes it more bankable. So if you have customary lands near the city uh, peripheries or near uh, townships and you want to work in consultation with the Lands Department or any developers, you need to have your titles uh, legalized. They have to be registered. So the minister says this is not about taking their land from them, but to ensure their land is bankable. He says without a bankable land title, their land cannot be developed. We are not going to take the land off you. We will help you to uh, register your lands properly and then convert it into uh, uh, proper legal titles that you can use as bankable titles going forward to the bank and help you uh, partner with it. Uh, without the bankable title, you cannot, you really can't do much with uh, going to the banks or mortgaging it or developing it. 
The minister further highlighted issues of corruption in the department. Over the years, there have been issues of missing files. He says this is a legacy issue that has been in the department for years and they are working on addressing this issue. And to ensure this issue is addressed, an automated filing system will be introduced by the department. They've also uh, put in automated uh, filing systems to ensure that all our files are kept in order. There's currently a lot of allegations of files going missing and uh, duplication of titles. It is a um, legacy issue that's been there for heaps of years and uh, it won't take one year to fix it. A uh, good secretary has been directed to uh, him and his staff to fix all these problems within the next year. The automated systems will begin with the launching of the billing and receipting electronic system next month. This is also to ensure lens documents are tracked electronically. Be, uh, uh, for tracking all your lens documents, checking your bills, receipts and everything will be uh, done electronically. So it uh, cuts out all the, uh, all the uh, misuse and uh, misappropriation that uh, uh, allegations are leveled against us. People will also be able to track the uh, files that come through the system. The minister further highlighted plans for the Najab Township upgrade in Morobe province. Work has commenced and the project is expected to be launched next year. And uh, the government's uh, policy uh, under the uh, Marapa Stevens government is to create a new township in uh, Najab and in Kikori. We've already uh, done much work ahead for Najab township. It's, uh, we plan on acquiring 2,000 hectares of land and turning it into a new township. Uh, that's for our mining workers and for our taxpayers to cater for people flying in and out of Najab airport. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. An expected COVID-19 update from the National Command and Control Center, NOC-19, today did not eventuate. Media had been expecting responses to questions on a confusing statement released yesterday on the death of a woman with a positive COVID-19 result. The person in question had died as a result of multiple organ failure after battling cancer. However, a statement released to the public had put it as PNG's first COVID-19 death. On Thursday last week, Deputy SOE Controller Dr. Paisen Dakulala had announced that four new cases of COVID-19 had been detected, all four being members of the Central Public Health Laboratory who have been working on identifying and testing for COVID-19. Those four cases bring in last week's total to 15, but over the weekend, Two more cases brought to light, the second of which has caused confusion since the patient died from multiple organ failure as a result of breast cancer. The title of that statement, PNG confirmed 17th positive case, announcing a case and then advising of her death from complications. It has left much to be desired from the front line of PNG's COVID-19 defense mechanism. It isn't the first time that poorly presented information disseminated to the public has had the nation concerned. The Prime Minister himself had come under fire for the manner in which the first case had been announced via social media. And Health Minister Jalto Wong has received the same flack for sometimes seemingly offhand remarks. Papua New Guinea's first confirmed case was announced on the 20th of March. Two days after that, the nation went into absolute lockdown. And considering that NCD alone has recorded six in the last week, it does come as somewhat of a surprise that a decision on another SOE being declared in the nation's capital is still pending. On the 27th of March, Jayapura, the capital of the Papua province west of Papua New Guinea, recorded its first positive case. Since then, their numbers have ballooned, with Indonesia as a whole hitting an 80,000 case record. It's in stark contrast to PNG's comparatively minuscule numbers, but still largely a concern, especially considering the state of PNG's health system and the level of preparedness in contending with this pandemic. The government, through the SOE controller and the command and control center, had earlier this year stated that it would be around July and August that numbers were expected to rise. What isn't expected is the manner in which this information is being passed on to the people of the country. Information and contact tracing has been stated, but not the actual figures. And at present, the status of other positive cases who are in recovery are still pending. More questions than answers. Jeremy Mogi, National TV News. 
This is National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after the break. A National Housing Corporation land that was bought by a Seventh-day Adventist church in Leh in 1987 was issued land titles after 30 years of waiting. Buimore Road Adventist Church signed the land transfer titles agreement with NHC in 2006. It took the office of the NHC 14 years to complete the transfer of titles through the Department of Lands and Fiscal Planning. The Minister for Lands and Lay MP John Rosso officially handed over the land title to the Buimo Road Seven Day Adventist Church yesterday after 33 years of waiting. The title was received by a young church member and two pioneers of the church. They've waited for almost 14 years after signing the transfer of titles agreement with the National Housing Corporation in 2006. And it has been a struggle for the church. Uh, we lost a lot of parents and the pioneers of the church who were waiting to see the titles given to the church and get the church building constructed. But uh, we say thank you to the Lord to make things possible today and for getting people into the right place, right position to help us and give us the advice to to successfully get the titles transferred to the church. Time by Mibla, moving the slab, building come down, building construction by start. Just wait us alone, let the service alone, come now, identify in Pantry, Mibla, Mibla, and Mibla, put defense and walk by kick off. Lace Buimo Road Adventist Church was established here at the Bundi Camp area in 1987 after the land was bought off from NHC. In 2006, the church signed the transfer of titles agreement with the National Housing Corporation and waited for almost 14 years for the titles to be transferred. According to the Minister for Lands and Lay MP John Rosso, 30 years was too long for the church to wait in order to receive their title. Because the ground floor, NHC, all must have, all NHC must ready for the something before Kamaklo Mipla. So Kamaklo Mipla now, the process is a bit uh, easier. But for, I think, uh, reasons by itself, I told Mipla to come to 2017 on lands, they come and sit down and sit down and sit down. And. With the titles on hand, the church would now begin the construction of a new church building, a pastor's house, and a community centre. Lay District supported the church with 20,000 kina. Any former youth of the church also supported with 30,000 kina towards the building construction. We believe that we will continue to work together with the government to make sure that the buildings are uh, complied to the national uh, physical planning laws. And we will look forward to that and we say thank you. Julie Badui, our national MTV News. Lay. And now looking at the Nasfan market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.288 US dollars in the Intermag market. At Bank South Pacific, the Kina was buying 0.2805 US dollars, 0.3969 Australian dollars, 0.2373 Euro and 29.38 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee and cocoa closed higher, copper closed lower, Crude oil is trading higher. Palm oil closing lower and copper closing higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed 62.76 points lower with the ASX 200 is trading at 22.762 points higher and the All Ordinaries is trading at 21.867 higher. National MTV News continues after the break. Two more new cases announced and Port Moresby General Hospital now the epicenter for COVID-19. Welcome back and in news just in, Port Moresby has two new cases. The National Command Centre announcing the two cases. The 18th case is 53-year-old male with no history of travel and was experiencing fever, cough, shortness of breath and was tested via gene expert testing. 
The 19th case, a 39-year-old male who works as a medical officer. Deputy Controller Dr. Paisen Dakulala has stated that targeted testing strategy has given more efficient use of resources rather than a wide net testing. Dr. Dakulala has now called on all public health authorities to take ownership of their territories and ensure testing is conducted at clinics. Port Moresby General Hospital, PNG's only major referral hospital, has now scaled down services. CEO Dr. Paki Molume says only essential services such as the main emergency services, children's emergency and labour ward will be open. Port Moresby General Hospital has become the epicenter of the most recent COVID-19 cases in Port Moresby. The hospital today commenced scaling down services following the 17th COVID-19 case of a female who died from stage 4 cancer. Children's outpatient will continue. Emergency department will continue. Labor ward and the maternity services will continue as normal. We've only scaled down uh, non-essential service so that it gives staff, uh, we free up some staff so that uh, we move them to these areas to do surveillance, uh, as well as uh, decontaminate, decontaminating the uh, hospital. The hospital has also started testing staff who have come into contact with the female before her passing. On that announcement, we have made certain, 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 uh, certain issues at the hospital. The first is, uh, we have to decontaminate the ward and in fact the entire hospital. Yes. Two is uh, we are doing surveillance and contact uh, tracing of all the staff that has come in contact with this patient and uh, testing is ongoing. Now. We have collected about 80 specimens today which will be continued for the next few days. Meanwhile, the hospital is in contact with the family of the deceased as COVID-19 disease protocols take effect. Shamin Poreambeb, National MTV News. Authorities in Leh have failed on a number of occasions to perform their tasks diligently before issuing trading licenses to potential businesses. There have been instances of foreigners conducting their business while ignoring government rules and regulations. One such case is that of a business run by a Bangladeshi man in Leh who was told to close shop by ICCC for buying expired flower bags and selling back to customers. Complaints were laid by the community. Julie Badui Orr reports. This is how Anna trading at Lace Kamkumu Corner area mixed their flour and cook recipes made from flour to sell to the members of the community. A couple runs the shop. The man is a foreigner from Bangladesh and the wife a Papua New Guinean. A team of officers from the Independent Consumer and Competition Commission, PNG Immigration and the police inspected this kitchen area that is also used for sleeping. The shop was ordered to close on the weekend following a complaint from members of the community that the shop owner has been buying expired flower bags from a man with a dump truck who delivers to him. There's a trend that has been going on, long blood time. All suppliers, all flowers, me plan to save all. When I have now all the salim, all disposal, all flowers, all the barbacara, all the trauma, all the map, all the all the covering, all the. The couple were interrogated by ICCC regional manager for Mumase, Timothy Punau. The father of three from Bangladesh claimed he has been living in PNG for almost 13 years. He denied buying flower bags from the man with the dump truck and told the ICCC officer not to listen to the complainant because he claimed the complainant deals with illicit drugs. I'm checking the workman. It's the time I established to. I come back and I'm complaining about this workman. I'm to blow one talk and talk to his stuff. Sila dam tera kan pinjam, hormos five belas bagian karim gua, five belas bagian karim gua na, mungkin sila non story stop. So India am doa am no sabem kiaman, 
Semasa itu belum bukman demi agama mazhab, tu belum kami sim selatri belum begi, tu belum rasim lokar agama mazhab itu anda sana pun dah tu belum begi, anda pun mampu anda belum begi guna itu penis lawas, stop belum ini zaid. Anna trading and the expired flower bags is one of many cases happening in Lay and throughout the country. The High Triple C continues to do their job with the little manpower and resources they have to protect consumer rights, whilst the approving authorities such as the Health Division and Building Board goes ahead in approving trading licenses to operate. The locals employed by the owner of Anna Trading and the owner confirmed that they were issued trading licenses without any inspection. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. Trukai Sports is next. Fidelis Sukina is at the sports desk. Thank you, Toraho. We'll show you the match between the Hella Wigman and the Goroka Lahanis in the Intercity Cup. I'll be back with the details in Trukai Sports after the break. Tukai Sports. And welcome to Trukai Sports. The Hella Wigmen have gone three from three after a 10 point victory over the Goroka Lahanis on Sunday in Port Mosby in the second match of the double header. Uh, right hand side holds it up. The Hello Wigmen scored their third win in a row on Sunday. The Wigmen managed to score first through William Mone, who barged his way from dummy half to score in the fourth minute. A successful conversion took the score to 6 0. The Lahanis managed to score in the 10th minute, capitalizing from a broken play by the Wigmen, allowing winger Jordan Milley for a try. The Lahanis trailed six points to four. The Lahanis have gone in to reply. On that left-hand corner, what a try. A long pass by Wigman halfback Solomon Pokari found Kennedy Telenge to go over for the team's second try. Finding, uh, finding the right man there on the left edge and they've gone in to score here, the Wigman. With the scores at 10 points to 4, Hella Wigman prop forward Tony Moide extended the lead further with this strong run. Yeah, that's a try. That's a try, uh, Big Moira using his side and... Uh... The weak men extending their lead to 14 points to 4, but the Lahanis had some fight in them, with fullback Manu Soli making a 70 meter dash for the left edge. Right on his tail! Oh, what a try this is! The Lahanis have hit back! Reducing the deficit to six points, the scores were 14 points to eight at half time. The second half was crappy for both sides with missed opportunities, but the Wigman managed to capitalize with two successful penalty conversions by halfback Solomon Pokari, which ensured a 10 point victory to the Wigman, who ended the match 18 points to eight victors. And Donald Fox, who spent most of his life in Papua New Guinea, helping in growing the game of rugby league in his capacity as the PNG RFL chairman and as chairman of the PNG National Rugby League, had his funeral today with those in Papua New Guinea watching it on live stream. The life of Donald Fox was celebrated today with a small gathering of Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League officials and staff of his former employer, Ella Motors. Don Fox, aged 78, passed away on Friday, 3rd of July, 3 a.m. at Meta Private Hospital after battling leukemia since being admitted to the hospital on the 6th of April. His funeral mass was held in the St. Stephen's Cathedral in Brisbane City today at 2 p.m. With COVID-19 restrictions on travel, those who could not make the trip to Brisbane to witness the funeral service sat through it via live stream. Touching tributes were given by his family, which mentioned his love for Papua New Guinea. Don, who came to Papua New Guinea as an accountant in 1965, ended up living most of his life in Papua New Guinea, contributing to rugby league as a player in Poma RFL and a former chairman and director until his passing. PNG RFL CEO Reata Rao and his former colleagues at Elamotos also gave tributes to the late Don Fox. To signify his love for Papua New Guinea, as his casket was rolled out, the national anthem of PNG was sung.
and his coffin was draped in the PNG flag. And also tomorrow, the funeral of late Jack Kedea, a prominent figure in Papua New Guinea Rugby League, circles will be held at the Sioni Kami Memorial Church from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And that story ends through Kai Sports. Turaho will be back with the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Bye for now. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. The forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Southern region, Port Moresby, cloudy then mostly fine. Daru, cloudy at times with occasional rain drizzles. Mostly fine in Kerama. In Alutau, cloudy with rain showers, and in Poponeta, mostly fine, then possible afternoon showers. In Momase, lay mostly fine, then possible afternoon showers. In Medang, Wewak, and Vanimo, mostly fine and sunny. Over to New Guinea Islands, Loringau and Buka, mostly fine, caving mostly fine, then chances of afternoon showers developing. Kokopo, Rabaul, and Kimbe, mostly fine and sunny. And to the highlands, Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundia were mostly fine. Mendia and Wabeg mostly fine, then possible afternoon showers developing. Renewal strong wind warnings for all coastal waters of southern Pinji Indonesia border through Torres Strait to Daru to Hood Point to Cape Rodney and including the Coral Sea. Strong east to southeast winds at 20 to 30 knots are expected to strengthen within the next 24 hours causing rough seas. All small crafts and boats are advised to take necessary precautions before going out to sea. Forecast for small crafts within the coastal waters of Papua New Guinea for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesia border through Torres Strait to Daru to Gulf of Papua to Hood Point and to Cape Rodney. Sea is 1.5 to 2.5 meters. Waters of Cape Rodney to Samurai Island to Eastern and Western Milin Bay Island seas a meter to two meters. Waters of East Cape to Cape Vogel to Finchafen with waters of Finchafen through Vitius Strait, Dampier Straits to Siasi Island to Long Island sea 0.5 to 1.5 meters. And waters of Long Island to Kaka to Wewak to Aitape and Northern PNG Indonesia border with waters of Manus and its western group of islands and with waters of New Island, East and West New Britain and Bougainville, see 0.5 to 1.3 meters. The ocean forecast for PNG areas, coral seas, moderate to fresh with southeast winds at 20 to 30 knots with gusts to 33 knots. Solomon seas, moderate with southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots with gusts up to 25 knots. The Bismarck sea, slight to moderate with east to southeasterlies at 10 to 20 knots. And the Pacific Ocean sea, slight with southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And before we go, in news just in, Port Moresby has two new cases of COVID-19 of COVID have been reported. The National Command Centre announcing that the 18th case is a 53-year-old male with no history of travel and was experiencing fever, cough, shortness of breath and was tested via gene expert testing. The 19th case is a 39-year-old male who works as a medical officer. Deputy Controller Dr. Paisen Dakulala has stated that targeted testing strategy has given more efficient use of resources rather than a wide net testing. Dr. Dakulala has now called on all public health authorities to take ownership of their territories and ensure testing is conducted at clinics. And that's the way it is this Monday, the 20th of July, 2020, from all of us here at MTV. Pleasant viewing. Good night. <laughs>